Hey, it's Dino, and today I want to walk you through uh, the quota policy for Apogee um, and show you a little bit about um, how you can use it with some dynamic externally generated values. So first, let's look at the documentation. I love the Apogee documentation. Um, in my opinion, it's very clearly written. It does take some time to read the documentation, but once you get through it, it's, it's clear. The quota policy, it says here, maintains a tally for the number of requests received by an API proxy according to a specific identifier. And with the policy, you can limit apps to, for example, one request a minute, 10,000 requests per month, and so on. Uh, like most of the policies in Apogee, all of the policies, you can configure them with uh, the Apogee-specific uh, configuration language. So this is these are some samples of what a quota policy might look like. For example, this one allows 99 requests for every five hours. Because it's a calendar type a quota policy, it starts uh, on the hour succeeding this moment. You can also have a quota policy that starts with the first request that it receives. So this one is configured to allow 1,000 requests in one hour. Counting uh, begins when the first request is received. And uh, lots of other options too. So the one really neat thing is that you can have a dynamically determined allowance counts and even dynamically determined uh, time units and uh, quantity for the time unit. So what does this mean? This means at runtime, rather than hard coding it in the quota policy itself, at runtime you can get the allowance counts for a particular request. Where would that come from? One good way to do that is to stipulate it when you configure the API product in Apigee. In the API product, you can configure quota limits. And this particular quota policy that I'm showing here, the sample, would retrieve the quota limit from the API product implicitly. It's, it's the configuration refers to a variable, count ref uh, names a variable. And this is this long string is the name of the variable that holds the quota limit that you configure in the API product itself. That would be in something like this. Let's have a look. Go through the list of API products. In the API product, I can configure a quota of, let's say, 100, uh, 1,000 for every uh, day. And if I save that, that is the product stipulated quota and when verify API key executes, that policy executes, the product specific quota is retrieved implicitly into this variable. And then you can refer to that variable in your quota policy. Pretty neat. But there's more. Uh, you can also have dynamically determined quota configuration, perhaps issued by some external system Let's suppose we have an external system that returns quota limits. It might look like this. This external system might include, uh, issue or describe quota limits for different tiers, for example, different tiers of customer. And the tier of customer is just something that you define. This value for each tier of customer might also be dynamic, might be de load dependent or dependent on the day, um, could have lots of different dependencies. But regardless, this is a dynamic externally generated bit of information. It is, in my example, it'll be available at a remote, a remotely accessible endpoint. We'll configure Apigee, the Apigee proxy, to call out to that endpoint, retrieve this information and then enforce quotas based on that. How would we do that? Let's have a look. 
I have built an API proxy called lookup quota externally. This proxy, most Apigee proxies allow a request to come in, do something with it, maybe verify or validate credentials, um, perhaps mediate security, perhaps look at, validate the payload and so on. And if everything looks right, proxies to an, the API proxy will proxy to an upstream system, a target system. That target will return a response. Apigee can similarly do mediation and then relay the response to the original client. That's just a reverse proxy. There are special cases in Apigee where you can configure a loopback proxy. That's what I've got here just for the purposes of demonstration. Basically, a request comes in. Apigee doesn't connect to anything on the upstream. It just validates the credentials, does its mediation, and then sends back a contrived response. So let's have a look at what it looks like. Here is my editor. The interesting bits are in this preflow, which uh, I've configured the API proxy to perform a few steps for every inbound request. The very first one is verify API key. Super simple. When you want to verify an API key, uh, drop in that policy, specify where to find the API key. I said, I want it in the header named API key. All right, so that's the first thing we do. If the caller passes something that's not a valid API key, that will result in an error. The next thing we do in this case is call out to that external system and get the limits, the limits that I just showed you from that prior curl command. Those limits uh, really are strings. So we need to parse that. And for that purpose, I've created a little bit of JavaScript. It retrieves the response content from that service callout and parses it as JSON. Then uh, it determines the tier for the caller. Uh, and if there are no errors and if uh, all that data is available, it parses, splits the, the data 10 slash minute, 20 slash minute, and so on, splits it by the slash and retrieves the first uh, part of that as the allow count the second part of that is a time unit. Okay, so this is just parsing. This JavaScript is just a quick parsing of the data that comes back from the service callout for a given tier. Then the interesting part, we have a quota policy, which uses the extracted values from that external, externally provided quota limit for the allowance and for the time unit. And it does so, the quota policy does so via these, uh, these attributes where you can refer to a, a, a variable that is set in the message context. If all of that uh, works, then, um, then the, the request will be allowed. But if the request exceeds the quota limit, it will be rejected. I've got some other things in this API proxy. Um, one policy that might be interesting is the one that sets the rate limit header basically telling the caller, this is the rate limit that is being applied in this case. This is how many requests that you have remaining. And this is when the rate limit will reset when you get a, a fresh count. That's a little bit interesting. It's a little bit of hygiene for your, um, for your clients, for your client callers. Uh, I want to review some other pieces of configuration that are required for allowing this to succeed. So I showed you that there's a verify API key policy in the API proxy. That is going to require a, an API key uh, or a client ID. And I've configured a couple of different apps for that purpose. Uh, here's one. Uh, it's called app 2024031-1. And you'll note that it has a custom attribute configured on it. The name of that attribute is tier. The value of that attribute is tier one. Um, so that's one of my clients. The second one I want to show you is a similar name, app 2024031-2. It has a different API key and a different custom attribute. Um, the tier is set to tier two. So when this when I send these in, these different API keys, they'll get treated as different tiered clients. 
let's actually see that work. So I'll clear that. And what I want is to, um, first I'm gonna send in a request using client ID one to my API proxy running in Apigee. And I wanna show you what, what the result is. The status is 200. Um, it's okay. The tier that is determined by Apigee is tier one. I want to call your attention to some the rate limit header that I injected with that API, uh, that policy, that assign message policy that I showed a little bit earlier. That's the thing that's telling the client, all right, your rate limit is actually 10. You have nine remaining and there are 46 seconds until reset. Just for convenience, I put in another header that's, that gives the formatted time in UTC for when that quota will reset. That's just something that you could do in Apogee if you want. Now, if I invoke that again, you'll see that the reset was supposed to occur at um, 2329. It is when I sent the, the follow-up request, it was 2329 and two seconds. So the quota had already reset. And now it is, uh, there are 10 remaining uh, requests in that minute. If I invoke it again, you'll see um, the remaining number on that particular quota is eight, and the reset number is going down as well. If I invoke this plenty of times, you'll see that I get down to zero remaining. The reset time has not elapsed yet, and of course we get a quota violation with a 429. That is what we expect. That's what we want. And if I invoke this again before the quota resets, so I have 11 seconds left, you'll see those 429 status codes continuing to be returned. If I wait long enough, send another request, the quota has reset, and uh, I get a fresh set of 10. All right, so that's for tier one. And remember, where do those limits come from? They're coming from here. Tier one is 10 a minute. What happens uh, if, if I do uh, the same request but rather than using client ID one, I use client ID two. In this case, now I have tier two. Rather than getting 10 per minute, this client is getting a, a rate limit of 20 per minute. And that is strictly based on the tier that is associated to that client ID that I showed you a little bit earlier. Again, it's dynamic. And as we uh, send in more requests with this particular client ID, you'll see that the count uh, the remaining count decreases. Uh, at the same time, the reset time is also decreasing. So we're just getting ready to reset. And uh, you'll see as soon as it resets, the client will get a fresh batch of 20. And now I have 19 remaining. So that's as we expect. And remember, if I, if I um, send a different client ID in, let's go back to client ID one now, I get a different count. I'm not counting against the 20 that was allocated for client ID two. I'm using uh, the count of 10 for client ID one. That is appropriate. That, that's the one we want to use for tier one. So this is a way that you can have an externally defined system providing the quota limits for the Apogee quota policy. I want to show you another thing here what if I want to make that dynamic? So I've added another little twist into this demo where I can modify the, uh, the quota limit by sending in a put request to that limit service. So now I'm defining the tier one service as 40 per minute, tier two is 80 per minute. Apogee is gonna be using that service call out policy to call again into the same limit service and it will retrieve um, a new um, a new limit and you'll see now that it's for tier one it's showing you can make 40 requests in a minute so it's completely dynamic you don't have to modify apogee to get that value to change and of course this can be dynamically determined it, it's it's something that's completely under your control and you can instruct apogee to use that information when it enforces rate limits Okay, so I hope that's been useful. Hope that's been helpful and clarifies the kinds of things that you can do with the quota policy in Apogee. 
Uh, Till next time, keep it digital.